Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. We're happy that you have decided to spend this time with us this morning. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jerry Bateman, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit, and it means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin as we do each week by affirming our vision and mission statements, which are foundational to who we are here at CSL Sarasota. The words can be seen on your screen and I invite you to join me in reading them aloud. First, our vision, empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And now our mission, we teach science of mind principles and other life affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person, and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. And we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. Now, as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, Close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath, and focus on the divine presence within as Fawny Frost and Bob Teasdale set the tone so beautifully for us with a song entitled, There Is Only Love by Karen Drucker. Gently 
In the beauty and quiet of this moment, I let go of everything in my life that is a distraction and commune with the divine presence, that infinite love that is both the center and circumference of my real being. All the love there is, is right here, right now with me. I hear only the voice of love speaking to me. I hear nothing but the words of wisdom guiding and inspiring me. And when I listen, there is a response from something greater than myself. It is the mysterious energy of love, the active principle of unity. Everything loves and, re and everything responds to love. It is a universal quality shared alike by all. It's the central flame of the universe. Desiring to be loved, I allow myself to love greatly to feel warmly inclined toward all people and to be helpful on their behalf. I give as I wish to receive. As I open my heart to others, so do they open their heart to me. I awaken to the love that is offered and respond by giving myself in love to the love that gives itself to me. Opening my heart and mind, I allow the creative action of God to express through me, aware that as my capacity to accept good expands, I become a blessing both to myself and to the world in which I live. In gratitude, I claim this to be the reality of life for myself and for each one. I release it into the law, knowing it will unfold perfectly. And so it is. Last week, we were blessed with the words of our guest speaker, Christy Hardwick, who launched our theme for August on radical self-tenderness. She shared thoughts and ideas from her recent book entitled Radical Self-Tenderness, How Nurturing Your Own Soul Can Heal the World. This morning, our founding minister and spiritual director, Reverend Karen Wolfson, will take up these ideas and weave them into a series of messages uh, which will tease out and enrich this theme. Her message this morning is entitled Radical Tenderness. But first, let's hear from Fawny and Bob singing Beauty in You by Karen Drucker. the power in you I see the greatness in you and so it is I see the child in you I see the sweetness in you I see the softness in you and so it is I can see it it's right there before me I can feel it deep in so I just know it that you are an angel full of magic and power and pure sweet love. I see the goodness in you, I see the wisdom in you, I see the strength in you, and so it is. I see. 
see the joy that's in you. I see your light shining through. I see the love that's in you, and so it is. I can see it. It's right there before me. I can feel it deep in my soul. I just know it that you are an angel full of magic and power and pure sweet love i see the grace that's in you i see the courage in you i see the heart that's in you and so it is i see the beauty in you i see the power in you i see the greatness in you and so it is i see the beauty in you I see the beauty in you. I see the power in you. I see the power in you. I see the greatness in you. I see the greatness in you. I see the goodness in you. I see the goodness in you. I see the wisdom in you. I see the wisdom in you. And I see your strength, your strength. I see the strength in you. And I see your joy, joy, joy. I see the joy in you. I see your light, shining light. I see shining. the light in you. I feel the love that's in you. I see the love that's in you. And I see the grace that's in you. I see the grace in you. I see the courage in you. I see the courage in you. I see the heart in you. I see the heart in you. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Fawny and Bob. I see the beauty in you. You know, I do see the beauty in you and you and you and you and you out there <laughs> every week. In my mind's eye, I do see you, the beauty in you. Now, I haven't been with you for these Sunday broadcasts since the end of June. And I want to say a huge thank you to each of our guest speakers who shared their inspired wisdom in my absence. They were wonderful. And now it's terrific to be back here with you. First, let me just say that personally this past month has been quite a ride, and maybe it has been for you too, but for me, been lots of good, lots of challenges, exhausting at times. And well, as perfect timing would have it, in the past couple of weeks, there came to my attention a book just written and published by my friend and treasured colleague, Reverend Christy Hardwick. The title was absolutely like a balm to my soul. Hear this and see if it doesn't immediately soothe your spirit, at least just a little. Radical self-tenderness, how nurturing your own soul can help heal the world. Oh, does this resonate with me at this time? I personally was so struck by the message of Reverend Christie's book that I asked her permission to use it as the theme for my August messages. And then it dawned on me that a perfect introduction would be for Reverend Christie to give the first talk, introducing firsthand the powerful message of her book. So she did that last week, and I certainly hope you heard it and saw it. Her video message, as well uh, as all of ours, of course, that is available on our website, our YouTube channel, and on Facebook. And her book can be found on Amazon and also the Centers for Spiritual Living's website shop. Here's what one of the many recent reviewers wrote about her book. This book exudes wisdom filled with honesty, courageous vulnerability, and deep healing. Christy Hardwick invites us on a journey alongside her as she shares with us pivotal life moments that deeply affected her, modeling how deep honesty and courageous vulnerability not only begin one's own healing, but also are imperative 
in the process of connecting us all. It goes on to say, this book is rich with deep wisdom about self-tenderness and the way we each deepen our own healing, which in turn expands the healing of the collective, of the world. Hmm. Before I go further, let's check in with each other. I'm so happy knowing you're out there. We do have each other <laughs> remotely, but we have each other, and that means so much. How are you doing? I always wonder, how are you doing? Know that I continue to affirm for you a year of vibrant wonder, no matter what. And to you, our team of financial contributors, I never tire of saying that you too are a wonder. You're an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. Thank you. So today, Radical Self-Tenderness, How Nurturing Your Own Soul Can Help Heal the World. Nurturing Your Own Soul. That is at the heart of self-tenderness. But where to begin? What is Radical Self-Tenderness? Now, the song sung by Fawny and Bob earlier provides an opening for this. You remember some of the lyrics were, I see the beauty in you. I see the power in you. I see the greatness in you. I see the child in you. I see the sweetness in you. I see the softness in you, the goodness, the wisdom, the strength, the joy, the light, the love, the grace, the courage, the heart in you. And so it is. Well, in view of today's theme, you know, we could turn that around. Take these words in the first person for yourself now, saying, I see the power in me, the greatness in me, the beauty in me, the child in me, the sweetness, the softness, the goodness, the wisdom, the strength, the joy, the light, the love, the grace, the courage, the heart in me. I see that in me. And so it is. Hmm, when is the last time you acknowledge yourself like that? I know, me either. It can feel awkward and egotistical, right? But maybe not so much if done in the context of self-tenderness. You know, it occurs to me that in a way, the notion of being tender with myself is a pretty radical notion. Reverend Christie acknowledges this in the, in the title of uh, the first chapter of her book. The title is, How Can I Be Terrified of Tenderness? And she then says, when I'm tender with myself or someone is tender with me, I feel vulnerable. I can relate to that, can you? But also, I love the word tenderness. I love it when I feel tenderness toward another. That feeling of tenderness toward a baby, a beloved pet, another person. I remember oh so fondly the sweet tenderness of my late husband, Irwin. But tenderness toward myself? Hmm. That's an incredibly beautiful thing to sense and to ponder. As Reverend Christie expressed it in her book title, it is a nurturing of my own soul. How about you? Take a moment to bask in the richness of tenderness toward yourself, of nurturing your own soul. As I thought about this, I reflected on some of my previous messages on the power and the beauty of self-love, and now I'm revisiting these with you through the lens of tenderness. Because tenderness takes these to a new level, a new dimension. For example, sometimes we can find we're on a constant treadmill of self-improvement, pushing ourselves and never even appreciating who we are as we are. And I remember that song sung by Billy Joel, I love you just the way you are. But do we dare say those words to ourselves? I love myself just the way I am? Well, you know, maybe when framed, when framing those words in tenderness, this might be a little, a little bit easier. 
Anthony DeMello, who was a spiritual teacher, wrote this. He said, I was neurotic for years. I was anxious, depressed, and selfish. Everyone kept telling me to change. I resented them, and I agreed with them. I wanted to change, but I simply couldn't, no matter how hard I tried. And he goes on, and he says, then one day, someone said to me, don't change. I love you just as you are. <laughs> Anthony wrote, those words were music to my ears. Don't change, I love you as you are. And he says, I relaxed. I came alive and suddenly I changed. <laughs> I will have to say that when these words are framed in tenderness, I find that I too can relax and even come alive. And by the way, as a byproduct, my just might change or not, but I know that it opens me up to more tenderness toward others. And here's the important part. That is how ever so gently self-tenderness can ripple outward and help heal the world. And that's important to realize because otherwise we can be thinking that self-tenderness is self-indulgent, just plain selfish. But if that was the case, it would be anything but healing to the world. Reverend Christie writes, To be tender is to be vulnerable and open. Vulnerable and open people do not harm others. Think about it. One of my colleagues, Dr. David Alt, said, Everything is a mirror to the innermost belief you carry about yourself. He said, you can life hack and how to all you want, but nothing will really elevate in your life until you elevate your self-criticisms to self-acknowledgements. And I'll add to that, to welcoming back your vulnerable and tender accepting spirit. Reverend Christie goes on to say, I find tenderness in acceptance. Acceptance is not dwelling. Acceptance is fully embracing your experience and acknowledging how it felt or feels in your heart. And she continues, giving your heart a chance to transform the experience into something that expands your capacity to love. Oh my, what if we gently embrace our hurt, she says. Tend to our wound for as long as and in all the ways we need. Radical tenderness as acceptance. One of my favorite current authors, Tama Keeves, writes a lot about her realization of the hurtful impact of being self-judgmental in anything but tender or accepting. She says, I used to think that self-judgment would whip me into shape, but it whips me into bad shape. Every time I judge myself, I hurt my own heart. I'm no longer useful to myself or humanity. That last line is especially significant because it underscores how self-tenderness can help heal the world. So in view of that, what if we ask ourselves these questions? Who would I be if I weren't telling myself that I'm doing it wrong and that it's too late or you can fill in the blanks. What if I start approving instead of improving? Ah, self-tenderness. I know. Now I'm going to take a wild guess that you and I share this notion that for me, when I'm criticizing and judging myself, most of the time the words in my head are from what I think others are thinking about me. Well, my colleague, the late Dr. David Walker, wrote a wonderful book titled, You Are Enough. And in that he said, when you know you are enough, you don't waste time trying to impress people because you know that the way people think about you is secondary to the way you think about yourself. The source of your enoughness is life, is God, the creator that created you out of its very self. How could that not be enough? To be just who you are. Wow, that's such a loving and tender thing to do for yourself and for the world. 
in the words of Reverend Christie, you know, it's a process. And she said, I am on the road to feeling worthy of my own tenderness, on the road to knowing that I'm enough, just as I am right now, without doing one more thing. And that reminds me of author Sue Monk Kidd. She tells a story about her little girl at Christmas time. We came home from school so excited to tell her mom that she got one of the great parts in the nativity play. Well, her mom asked, what, what part did you get, honey? Oh, I'm the star of Bethlehem. And her mom asked, well, what do you do in that part? Her daughter's reply, I just stand there and shine. <laughs> She knew she was enough. As Jesus, the master teacher, said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say, you are the light of the world as soon as you clean up your act or take another seminar. No. He said, just as you are, you are a light in this world. And there's more. Being radically tender to ourselves we're saying yes to our very soul's yearning, as Reverend Christie calls it, nurturing our own soul. And one of her chapters is titled, Tenderness Has a Yes and a No. And she uses the example like the sculptor who remi re removes what's not needed in order to reveal the intention. Each... Um, it, removing each part that is not in alignment with your good, with your very soul. That's the yes and the no, like the sculptor. And in your yes, you follow the enthusiasm that's coming from within you. Honoring the no and the yes is part of tenderness. Now, Karen Drucker wrote a terrific song about this. And oh, is my new yes. I've spent my life saying yes when I really meant no. I've been living my life to please. I've been such a good girl, but now I know when I'm untrue to myself, I lose a piece of my soul. I thought to be liked, I had to be nice, doing what others wanted, but I was paying the price because what good is my giving, how authentic, how true, when I cheat me just to please you? And so she says in the song, N-O is my new yes. And when I say no, I'm saying yes to me and I set myself free. It's all about trusting my heart to know just when N-O is my new yes. And I want to emphasize, this doesn't require gritting our teeth and hammering away at all of our perceived shortcomings and deficiencies, no. It's simply relinquishing those shoulds and turning to your loving acceptance of who you are, just the way you are. One of those big shoulds, by the way, as well as one of, a, one of uh, Reverend Christie's chapter titles says, if I'm tender with me, I let everyone else down. But then she writes, you don't let anyone down when you care for yourself. The opposite is true. You make it possible to help lift them up. And she continues, I believe I'm giving a gift when I'm unavailable. A gift of example that says it's okay to be tender with yourself, to put your needs first. And my capacity to witness, listen, and support is expansive when I align with what I need. And so she phrases it this way. She says, Dear recipient of my gifts, I'm sorry that I need to rest and recharge right now, so I'm not available to give you what I promised some time ago. I want to give you my best, but I have used what I have, and I don't want to give you anything that does not come from a sense of wholeness. This is a clear example, she says, to another that they can also do the same thing. She writes, heal yourself, take care of your needs, be tender with your heart, and then go out into the world from your fullness and give what is overflowing from you. And this is how your radical tenderness helps heal the world. 
So finally, take these words of Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching. It sums it all up. He, and I've shared these with you often, I know. I love them. He said, your individual dreams and desires are spirits longing to be fulfilled. Every one of us personally has back of us the potential of the universe. There is an irresistible impulse for self-expression pressing through everyone, and it is limitless. Spirit put its stamp of individuality on itself and called it you. Fonny and Bob are going to send us into our week with Karen Drucker's spot-on delightful song about appreciating ourselves. Take it as your daily mantra this week. I look good. Because you do. And so do I. <laughs> and so it is. I got this new little game, it's the latest of rage. It's not limited by race, creed, color, or age. I stand in the front of the mirror every day. Look at myself from head to toe and simply say, I look good. I look good. I look good. and precise I can't judge or criticize I have to be nice it's the body that I have it's divine and a gift I don't need to lose weight all of my gray and have a face live I say I look good I look good I start every day by saying I look good I am the only me that I'll ever be a love. me isn't limited to what's on the outside. It's my inner world too that cannot be denied. Cause I really, really am radiates from where so I open my heart, quiet my critic, and dig in. They say the beauty is a skin deep, but I know for a fact it's not really how you look, but more how you act. Was I kind to a stranger that I give love today? I can look in the mirror, look at myself, and I can say I am. I am good, I am enough, you know I am good, I am good, I am the only me that will ever be, I look good, I look good, I look good. Ever be a look so good. Thank you, Reverend Karen, for your beautiful message, and Fawny and Bob for reminding us how beautiful we all are as the only me that will ever be. Now, as we move into our time of offering, we want you to know how grateful we are for your generous support of, our, of this center. It allows us to support you in so many ways. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is 
www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can first select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card. Or you can email a, a check to our address. You can also set up contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it and know with me, my gift goes forth to heal, to bless and to prosper and the divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. Now, please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. If you'd like prayer support, I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. Use this feature to send us your prayer request. Know that our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankett, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and Jim Grove are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with you and for you in whatever challenge you might be experiencing. They're also available for one hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select practitioners. So here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our e weekly email newsletter. And we also encourage you to check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I have one announcement for you this morning. A spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening for one hour from 7 to 8 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month Science of Mind magazine and this week, we'll be discussing the article by Jesse Jennings in the August issue, at, which is entitled, Our Divine Nature is Absolute Inclusion. This is a wonderful opportunity for spiritual development and thoughtful conversation with other like-minded individuals. So if you'd like to participate, uh, please email Jim Grove at the address shown on your screen, and he'll send you the Zoom link the article in the discussion guide. So now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let's move forward into this week ahead in the spirit of radical tenderness. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. Let this be my song. 